Hello, and I'm the president of the Ember Fan Club. <laughs> A.K.A. Lux. <laughs> oh, and I guess that's the point where I'm supposed to say something sweet about Lux, but he's here. Hi, I'm Ember. <laughs> and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 20, The Washouts. This episode has some cringy moments in it, but it wasn't the kind of cringy that makes us go, <laughs> stop. Yeah, yeah, no no pausing. Also, props for SNL reference. I'm pretty sure that that was an SNL reference. Like you said, like, specifically the trailer park gag. The guy who basically all the parents and all the people who want to have motivational speakers come in have this guy come talk and it always ends with you're gonna end up living in a van on the river and the more spitfire talk that was all i could hear and i don't even watch snl through a straw that doesn't even sound like spitfire <laughs> and i'm like yeah it actually doesn't even Spitfire didn't sound like Spitfire. No, she didn't. It was all for a gag. Even when she was talking normally, she sounded like Spitfire, but then she went up into that weird range. And I think you're right. It was the, in a trailer park. Down by the river. <laughs> I only know that gag because of it being part of pop culture and being referenced and stuff. Also, they use that gag a lot to sell their VHS tapes. Yes, VHS tapes. Yep. Chris Farley, I think, was the particular actor? Don't look at me. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I think that, I'm pretty sure that's his name. I'll look it up later, maybe put it in the description field. I almost said comments, but hey, that would work too. I can pin messages to the top, but... We'll see in the description. Okay. The beginning of the episode was interesting. Specifically the part of, like, when Rainbow Dash comes in and goes, I eavesdrop all the time. I know that sounds weird out loud. <laughs> but it really isn't. Like, no, no, it totally is. I mean, if you were going to show up and surprise them and you were listening for a good time to make your entrance... Like when the president of your fan club suddenly goes, this is the new fan club. And you're like, ah! And as usual, Rainbow Dash overreacted. Though, it's not as bad as she's done before. Because on top of the, she doesn't think I'm cool anymore. And how can she say the Wonder Bolts aren't cool? How can she say I'm not cool? There's the actual danger factor of she could legitimately get hurt. So the overreaction was tempered with the very reasonable reaction of these stunts are dangerous. Because, oh boy. 90s extreme. I kept waiting for Iron Will to actually be the announcer. Extreme. Oh my god, the 90s. Everything was extreme or not. I mean, really. I, I had a BMX extreme not. It was a regular bicycle. Yeah, because it was not extreme. Also, I'm wondering, was it even a BMX? Or was the whole thing not? I think it was actually made by the company that makes BMX, but it wasn't a BMX, because I have no idea what a definition of a BMX would be, but this thing definitely was not off-road and really anyway other than mild dirt roads which is what i had plus mild sidewalks that led right into a highway the most interesting thing where i lived the highway sit there and watch cars drive by Vroom. Ooh, today's a good day that was a car Ooh, it's a really good day that was a semi or if you're really lucky, road construction. Ooh, there's a line. I want to go get the lemonade and sell this. Which is exactly what I did one summer. They were doing road construction. Entire line of people. They're thirsty. Let's get the lemonade. I mean, like 50 bucks. 
I did not witness any of this, but I can attest that it is true because I've been to the town next to the town that Lux grew up in. That was about as much motion sickness as I could handle. Yeah, it's a lots of mountain roads, man. When you take Dramamine and you still get sick, you know it's bad. Oh yeah, and they do not grade these roads correctly. But back to the episode. Yep. Fun tangents are always fun. But I actually did like how surprisingly contained Rainbow Dash was. She was still bursting at the seams, but she still held herself in pretty well. Especially when she found out, you? Yeah, considering that Lightning Dust put all of Rainbow Dash's friends in danger. It's one thing to be reckless with yourself. It's another to put others in danger. It's like the difference between being a professional stunt person and being one of these geniuses that does sideshows. Though, speaking of those geniuses, well, specifically the geniuses of the washouts, my favorite was Short Fuse. Well, he got way more lines. Also, was that really his name? What, again, pony naming rules. Do you really name your child that? Hey, if he truly has a short fuse. Yeah, but how do you figure that out at birth? Lots and lots of crying and hitting you. At least that's my random guess. It, it just, he reminded me a lot of a particular pigeon from a particular show called Good Feathers, I believe, which was a segment on Animaniacs. Uh, really, I was thinking more of Anger from Inside Out, because it was short and red and constantly blowing his top. That works too. Both of them are very valid. Because the main thing with one of the good feathers that you're thinking of, I can't remember their names right now, was he would mainly get worked up because he would misunderstand what someone else said. And he would get worked up based on that misinterpretation. Sure if he's just got mad because you spoke to him or he interacted with anything. This sandwich isn't good enough. It's an abomination. <laughs> A tomato sandwich, it looked pretty tasty. I like tomato sandwiches. I also like tomato with a little bit of mayonnaise on top of it. Delicious. Or a nice mutton lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of references in this episode. Check. Mm -hmm. Any picker points you'd like to go over? Well, it had a nice overall flow to it. Good multi-point lesson because you had Rainbow Dash learning that you have to let go as ponies grow up and Scootaloo learning that just because something looks cool doesn't mean the person doing it is cool. That also reminded me of the fact that we had confirmation that Scootaloo actually can't fly. They've never actually said it in the show. They've implied it heavily. They've never actually flat out said it. The closest they ever came was a discussion between Scootaloo and Rainbow Dash where she said, I don't know if you'll ever be able to. But that was the closest. This time we got it flat out stated yelling, I can't do this. Which is perfectly okay. She's got like motors on her back, man. She can get that scooter going quick. It's one of the things Rainbow Dash really likes about her is how awesome she is on that scooter. Because it's not about being a flyer it's about being good and yeah she could totally do skunts with her scooter i could see her doing that and even doing a stunt show sort of wonderbolt like the wonderbolts are kind of more like going to the state air shows and the washouts are kind of more like going to the circus the washouts are more for the bang and zoom and explosions. The wow factor, kind of like how explosions you see in movies, are big and flashy, but they don't really have a lot of kick to them. Then you see an actual explosion and you're like, whoa, no one can actually walk away from those not looking at them. <laughs> because they would get their face planted into the ground by the sheer force. Just the impact of the resulting sonic waves. <laughs> There's a reason heroes can walk away from explosions and not look at them in movies. Because those explosions don't have any kick. They're just flashy. They're pretty to look at. 
basically that's the washouts. The Wonder Bolts are actually technically accurate. They do stuff that's really difficult and still looks really cool because I've seen that actual Blue Angels. I actually talked with them. They're cool. <laughs> the Blue Angels, the Canadian Flyers. I got a hat signed by those guys. Cool. Uh, the people who bring out the old B-17s. Oh, and the, even the people who fl fly really amazing with biplanes. There's this really dangerous maneuver I wa saw once where the plane goes straight up and kind of just spins. And you're like, oh. <laughs> But see, that last one sounds more like the washouts. <laughs> yeah, but these guys know safety protocols and they know how to do that safely. And that was the thing is the washouts could have been great if they didn't throw all the safety protocols out. You can do dangerous things if you take precautions. Yeah, the only precaution they took was that their fact that their suits were fireproof. That doesn't do you a heck of a lot of good when your mane and tail aren't part of the suit. Neither are the wings. And hair is incredibly flammable. And you're flying. You burn those wings, you're going to tumble out of the sky. You will be quite literally toast. Only not quite, because you weren't bred to begin with. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you literally said you couldn't get out of bed. I'm going to literally take this crowbar upside your head. <laughs> yes, I hate those word crimes. <laughs> As you can tell, we really love word, word owl. I don't know why they call me Al. <laughs> the animation was really good in this episode, too. The animation was really good. I like how Rainbow Dash got totally pulled in to the show. Because you take an experienced professional flyer, and then she's impressed. That gives the audience a point of reference of what the caliber of the flyers are. Because if they were slipshod, she would have been talking about that, despite the danger. And it's the fact that they were washouts from the Wonderbolts is the fact that they were, that's why they were so talented. Problem is, they didn't want to follow safety protocols to make sure that they lived to fly another day. And because all of them, by the sound of it, that was other than explosion mixed explosion or hot headed one or shirt. Short fuse. I also wanted to call him Little Round, but that doesn't quite work. I don't know what what thing he broke other than sh probably shouting at Spitfire. Well, he would be a disciplinary problem because he would be talking back to his superior and disrespecting his superior. Yeah, because other than those things, they're all great flyers. It's not about ability. It's about logic and safety. Logically, you can only do stunts like that so many times before you get hurt. Yeah. I mean, they even showed one of the three being hurt. And having to stay out for a couple of sessions. She even said that, we have an opening now because she's hurt for a little bit. If they just, like, tightened up safety protocols a little bit, they could actually launch themselves even further than they are right now because they would be, like, an alternative to the Wonderbolts, kind of like we have other Air Force and um, other flying teams that do shows. And just to go away from Ariel for a moment, it's just Ariel forces are the most convenient to compare to Pegasi. It's like different race teams because there's different circuits. Because there's the U.S. circuit and there's the European circuit. I'm pretty sure the Griffins would love their show. I'm sure they would. And probably the Hippogriffs, too, because the Hippogriffs seem to love everything. Dragons would really like the show, too. Except for the part where they're ponies. Yeah, the, the, the difference between a pony audience and a dragon audience for the show is the dragon audience be like, oh, because the dragon audience be like, oh, they missed. Oh, it's going to get up. Oh, man. Why isn't that pony on fire? Someone breathe on him. <laughs> That, that's the main difference right there. And the Griffin audience would just be catcalling how they could outfly those guys. 
There is a Griffin team out there. Because we saw them at the Equestrian Games. Uh, the color design, I kept going back and forth between Green Hornet and Changelings. Ah, you mean the Kato Show? <laughs> In, like, a lot of other countries, it was known as the Kato Show. <laughs> because Kato was way cooler. That was the only reason to watch Old School Green Hornet. That's actually the only reason to watch the reboot movie that they did a while ago. The guy that got to play Kato, excellent. But yeah, that was what the color scheme made me think of. That and changelings. So I was ready for them to be rogue changelings. I was ready for them to be superheroes. And this was their side hustle that allowed them to travel. Hmm. That's an idea, though. They should so totally get a changeling. Because it could so up their game. Because mm -hmm. the changeling can change. Like, in mid-flight, through things. Like, oh, that'd be so awesome. We're, we're already improving. This is just how I am. It's like, ooh, hey, it would be neat if that happened. Ooh, changelings would make that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I can't help it. I like creating stories. I like drawing things. I like coming up with interesting ideas. I knew Rainbow Dash was going to swoop in and save Scoodloo. I like lightning dust like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, if I would have done this act myself. You mean, like, right now? What? Uh-oh. Ah! I did not understand what she said as she flew into the sky. It was probably something best not repeated, but the last thing I remember hearing was Rivals for Life. Ah, that was probably it. <laughs> when we first saw the rope, I originally thought it was something that Rainbow Dash had set up to hold Scootaloo back and keep her from making the jump. Hmm. But apparently it was just an example of their poor safety protocols. Beyond the fact that the rocket hadn't been tested and was having extra rockets strapped onto it. With their equivalent of duct tape. Duct tape is like the force. Has a dark and light side and holds the universe together. Yep. It can be used for good or it can be used for evil. I've seen entire cars held together with duct tape. Yeah, you watch racing, don't you? <laughs> Destruction Derby. Uh, and I also thought about the fact that the Le Lego recently built an actual car out of Legos. I can't remember what model it was, but it was one of those fancy sports cars. <laughs> I think they could only get it up to like 20 miles an hour because they were worried about the vibrations. But still. Because the only things that weren't Lego on this was the motor and the wheels. I believe there was a steel frame at the bottom, but other than that, like it was entire like, Wow. Apparently this was a side project. <laughs> it's amazing. Look it up online. I'm pretty sure you can type in Lego actual car and find this. So any particular nitpicks you'd like to go over before we wrap things up? Uh, we covered a lot of stuff on the way, but I'd like to go over to the Scootaloo fan club and the return of Rainbow Dash's parents. <laughs> that was great. Because they've already been supportive of Scootaloo before, because in the episode where she met them, they were outside the classroom during her presentation cheering her on. And that episode reiterated how important it is to have encouragement. Also a great way to come back with the joke of, everybody that's just right, this isn't weird at all. <laughs> and also the, yes, founding mentor, president, etc. At, at least... Rainbow Dash's fan club for Scootaloo had members. But yeah, Scootaloo was having some trouble with uh, conflicting loyalties. You're allowed to be a fan of more than one thing. It doesn't have to be the first three books of the Daring Do series or the last three books of the Daring Do series. You don't always have to choose. You don't have to choose Hippogriff or Sea Pony. You don't have to choose one princess you can like all of them which i do all princesses all ponies are my favorite i have no particular favorite i well correction i have a pinkie pie favorite but that's different she she can travel to dimensions that's her special power so but there isn't the okay you have to like this or else you can choose and you can like more than one thing and that was something that scootaloo wasn't quite seeing that because she liked the washouts didn't mean she couldn't like Rainbow Dash anymore. Yes, both belonged to flying groups, but they were different. 
That's like saying you can only like, oh, if I start naming bands, uh, things are going to explode even worse. <laughs> uh, you mean a certain band of four or five men? <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't going to go the uh, classic route. I was going to try to pick something a little more modern. <laughs> <laughs> But that requires listening to more modern music. Uh, the most modern stuff I listen to is mostly it's the fact that I the stuff that I actually listen to it's modern is on the radio and I don't really pay attention to it that much unless it's an earworm and it gets stuck in my head. And for the next five hours, I'm usually like, ugh, until I remember, oh yeah, pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. It's amazing how easily that gets stuff out of your head. Also, I am Batman. That that saved us one time. We were stuck in a that's what she said loop. And that was the only thing that broke it. Because no matter what we said, the other person would immediately reply, especially near the end. That's what she said. We didn't even want to. That's the worst part. We didn't want to. Because it was harmless fun at first. And suddenly we're like, we can't stop. And then at one point I remembered, how do you wake up in the morning without coffee? I am Batman. Uh, that, that was our saving grace. But yeah, her parents. Rainbow Dash's parents. For those of you not following along on our randomness. Yeah, we got back to here eventually. Also, I think there were a couple of members from the Rainbow Dash fan club in there too. Because they were probably actually more... Fans of Scootaloo, especially after all eight seasons. Ooh. And considering she put the fan club together, she chairs it, she arranges the meetings. She's actually a very reliable person. I mean, you have to be a reliable person to put that kind of stuff together. And then there's me who puts together a podcast. Eh. Well, now, uh, we're pretty consistent. I mean, we're not Watch Mojo. We don't have a new video every day, but... We have two up a week, and we haven't skipped. I try. I try. I drive her crazy, but I try. Just a little bit. Uh, is there more we'd like to go over, or should we exit stage left? Oh, I was thinking with the theme more of blasting off again. <laughs> Team Rocket's blasting off again. I heard their latest motto isn't that good. I'm kind of a fan of the classic. <laughs> Prepare for trouble. And make it double. To protect the world from devastation. To defend all peoples within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse. James. Team Rocket, blast off at the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Meowth. That's right. Okay, wow, that was horrible. You are turning in your rocket uniform. <laughs> yes, also, wah, Buffett! <laughs> Those who don't know about the editing, I flubbed that several times. You get to hear the edited version. Yeah, the one where Ember's not glaring. Well, he edits out the glaring. <laughs> Outro! Mm -hmm. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8. Episode 20, The Washouts. Thank you all for being our fan club. Or my fan club if you like my art. Woohoo! You can get more of it at the links below. Also, welcome to the end. Aren't you glad? Where are you going? Just because I said they left. Ember, they left. <laughs> it's the end of the video. No one watches animation credits. Would you call this an animation? Or I'd more call it kind of like Posing stills, because we don't really move that much. I know, but it's one of those pop culture jokes. Nobody watches animation credits. Yeah. Or intros, for that matter. But hey, since you're still here, you can help us support this channel by watching more videos. You can skip those credits, too. <laughs> we got a whole playlist. A lot of playlists. A lot of videos. There's like 200 some odd videos I haven't kept track. I would have to look. But I, we also have another show, as we mentioned before, on Wednesdays. 
Ember's Reading Room, where we revisit childhood memories of books as we read them. And also give our adult perspective on them now. Oh boy, some of those books. One surprised us. Go ahead and find it and put the title in the comments. Also, you can support us in other ways by sharing the video, liking the video. As I said, comment below. There's also ways you can support us through money. Like, for instance, if you like the art, you can get your own. Yeah, you can take your idea, tell it to me. I will tell you how much it would cost for me to make it. You pay me, and I make it for you, and I deliver it to your inbox. Isn't that wonderful? Also, there's a Patreon. It's only a dollar a month to start. Well, it's always a dollar a month if you pick the dollar a month option. There's also a five dollar option to get higher resolutions of the art you see on screen. But the one dollar option gets you the right to comment on my posts, vote on polls I put up. It's wonderful. You also get to make suggestions of art you'd like me to see me draw or I can color something in or you know just let me know in the comments I'll make a poll and you can vote on it it's wonderful also if you just want to give us some money straight out and you just want to use PayPal there's coffee three dollars you buy me a cup of coffee so I can stay up at night do stuff like this and talk really fast into the microphone really quickly yeah caffeine it's wonderful stuff also uh Ember kind of took part of my Tumblr, and she put stuff up on there. Helps you save money, you know. Make Starbucks a lot cheaper. It's amazing what you can do with our mobile app. But speaking of Ember, you can find her right over there. <laughs> As Lux mentioned, I did take over a corner of his Tumblr. I'm posting some of my tips and tricks and hacks. I could use some uh, suggestions for uh, Pony's favorite Starbucks drinks. Because I already posted my common hacks. I need to know what you drink. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.